All right, real good one here, guys. We have a 2002 Isuzu Rodeo with a 3.2 liter engine. This is the LS model, not that that matters. Symptoms with this vehicle are severe misfiring, and what we were told by the garage that brought us this car is that bank one, which is our passenger side, that there's no contribution on these three cylinders at times, it's intermittent. And history of the, the vehicle is it had an engine replaced, and ever since then, pretty much as far as we know, this problem has been there. And this vehicle in this garage's defense has been multiple locations. Uh, it came to us with the fuel rail removed and injector clips were off and fuel was leaking everywhere. The exhaust was disconnected. You know, who knows what, what people did to this, but that's the way we got the vehicle. So I want to take you inside and let's look at some scan data first and then we'll go from there. All right, here's a list of the codes that were in memory on this. And I took a screenshot of this, guys. I d I'm not doing this one live like I did my last one. We already know what's wrong with this vehicle, and I'm really going to get you right to the point with this, but I want you to see how the car reacts. I think that's the main purpose of this video. But this is the list we had when it came in. We have injector codes. We have rich and lean exhaust codes, opposite on bank one and two. Thermostat code and undocumented code. This was OBD2 when I went under this mode of communication, so I don't have a definition on that on this screenshot. Not a big deal for what I want to show you. We really want to focus on, on these two, the system too lean and too rich. We believe these codes were set when somebody, someone unplugged the injectors when they did their cylinder drop test. And so when you look at O2 codes like this, system too rich on bank one, system too lean on bank two, there's a few things I think you can rule out right away. And one would be fuel pressure, because if you had a fuel pressure problem, it would affect both banks the same way. Another one would be a mass airflow problem. If it was something like that, it would affect both banks the same way. When we see opposite fuel control issues like this, one of the things we think about is an incorrect timing. I've seen timing belts be off do this. Another one is when an engine's replaced, we have to worry about oxygen sensor connectors. So let's go to the scan data next and we'll pull up our data for this. This is our current code here. I'm not worried about the codes right now. Pull up our data for this vehicle. And I already have it configured. We'll look at our short terms, our long terms, our O2s. In fact, let me throw in my loop status here. Fuel system one and two. And what we want to look at, we'll, we'll look at it like this before we grab it. Go ahead and start the vehicle. Now it has some exhaust leaks, so the engine's a little bit noisy, but let's just watch these numbers. See the long-term memory. One's rich command, one's a lean command. Kind of matches our trouble codes. Just watch this for a minute. OL is open loop. We can actually look at this and we can look at short term to know when we go into closed loop. As soon as the short term starts to correct, there you go, closed loop right now. And what we see right away is, is short term on, on bank one is going negative and short term on bank two is going very positive. That's a huge number negative, negative 65. Notice our, our bank one sensor one, we're full rich, so that would make sense. We're taking fuel away, and our bank two sensor one, that's our upstream, our other upstream, we're adding fuel, total fuel of uh, 20, 30, almost 40%. The negative on bank one, we're taking away, what, 80, almost 90%. That's kind of crazy right there. So our first thought in looking at this when we saw these upstreams opposite of each other is, well, maybe we have an O2 problem. And one of the ways that we can check for O2 problems 
is to look for activity. And it's very simple. We don't need propane. We can just do it by fluttering the pedal. So I'm just gonna graph these two first, the two one and the one one. Can you get in and give me some snap throttle tests? That's good. All right, you can see that they both reacted. My O2 that was reading lean went rich, and my O2 that was reading rich went lean at different times. And so what we know about these O2s is they are reacting properly. Ungraph these, let's look at another piece of data here. And that is this OLFLT. We are in what's called an open loop fault mode now. And notice my fuel trim numbers are actually zeroed out now. We're not really correcting any longer. Also, my upstream O2s really are not doing what they were doing, full rich and full lean. And so really guys, what this is showing us, the computer's causing this problem. And it's causing this problem because my two upstream O2 sensors are backwards. Now I showed you this in a Hyundai video where we had an upstream and a downstream that were backwards, where we had a slow response trouble code from that. This one is the opposite. The two upstreams are reversed. So for me to show you this process again, and we'll, we'll talk about this a little more, what I need to do is get rid of this open loop fault. To get rid of that, we can simply exit out and we can turn the key off And we'll wait about five seconds or so with the key off. And then what we'll do is we'll turn the key back on, but don't start it yet. I gotta get my data configured. Stay right there. I'm gonna have you start it right back up. So we turn the key off, power down the computer, turn the key back on, and we still have this open loop fault here. I need to get rid of that. So maybe what I need to do then for this is, let's clear these trouble codes too. There are no codes. We have a pending code. We do. I am not sure if this will work. We may have to have the key off for a longer period of time. So clear the codes, go back to my data. See if we have this open loop fault indicated still on the scan tool. Okay, good, we don't. Um, before you start this, hang on. Let me graph these upstream O2s. And we'll actually graph the uh, the downstreams too. Let you guys look at these. And this would be the bank two upstream, bank two downstream, bank one upstream, bank one downstream. Go ahead and start that up. to chug here a little bit with the engine. It makes sense, my bank two is full rich. My bank one is full lean. Notice with this bank one reading lean, the computer is going to be adding fuel and I can't show you my fuel trim on this at the same time. I guess I could graph the fuel trim too, but we'll just look at our O2s. Computer's adding fuel here. We can actually see it if you look at the downstream O2, the bank one is actually running rich. We're leaning it out here. I'm sorry, the computer sees lean, it's commanding rich, but it's not changing here. What's happening is we're actually richening the wrong bank. So that's why you're seeing this one go high. And uh, I think what we'll do is we'll just pause that there. Okay, shut that off. Turn the key right back on so I don't lose this data. To explain this further, what we're looking at here, remember that, let's just start with this one that this sensor right here is actually the bank two upstream O2. Computer sees lean on the bank, on this upstream O2, even though it's bank two, it's, it's interpreting it as bank one. Bank two is running lean, 
what's the computer going to add if bank one is what it sees? It's going to add fuel on bank one. But this is the bank 202. It never sees that additional fuel. Which one's getting the fuel? The other side. So we're adding fuel, adding fuel, adding fuel here. It's not reacting. That's why the computer continues to add fuel. What are we seeing? We're seeing it on the other side. Now take the other side for a second. This is actually my bank 102, even though it's reporting on bank two. So bank two, what the computer thinks is bank two, is running rich. What does it do? It takes fuel away. The problem is, this is the bank one sensor. It never sees it. It continues to take fuel away and take fuel away. And it really is the reversed O2s that cause this condition. I hope that makes sense. The downstreams are correct. They are reacting like they should be. Our upstreams are backwards. We're going to switch these two and see how they react. Okay, for those of you that want to know how we figured this out and we're sure about it, what we did is we looked at the O2. This is the upstream right here in the pipe and that's the harness side of the connector. And we looked at the, sorry, that's the sensor side. We looked at the harness side and I unplugged it already. And we looked at these wire colors and matched it up to the diagram. This driver's side is actually supposed to be bank two. And what we have is these are the bank one wire color. So that was the way we confirmed our suspicions. And the way the harness is above the transmission, it, you know, it's kind of hard to justify this. And I understand why someone did this and didn't know. This harness really doesn't seem like it would reach to the other side. Well, the thing is, it goes above the transmission and around to the other side where the other O2 is, and the other one's going to come over here to me, and, uh, you know, kind of crazy, but things to look for. All right, we have the O2 switched around. I'm going to unfreeze this data, and I don't know. Okay, we're open loop on there. I want to make sure I don't have an open loop fault. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to show you guys these fuel trim numbers too. Well, let's throw the short term in here. That's going to be a little difficult to look at. Well, let's do this. I'm going to, I'm going to ungraph these first. And we'll look at this live. All right, open loop. You see the long-term memory is still there. So we're going to have a counter. As soon as this goes into uh, closed loop, we're going to have a little bit of issues here with the fuel trims. Um, go ahead and start that and let's watch it. I'll get you two shots of it. We'll get it here live where we can look at everything. And then I'll show you the graphs. And again, what we can look for. What, to know what, whether or not we're in closed loop, you can, you can actually just look at your short terms. You'll see these go to CL closed loop the same time these short terms start to correct. Some other things before we go any further, things that we need to think about would be an oil change when we're done with this. There you go, there's your short term correcting, countering the long term. That's actually a good shot right there. Try to snapshot that for later. That's a good one to show you the countering of your fuel trim. Number one job of the long term, number one job of the short term. Good review of that. We're looking at that counter. Unfreeze that. See these numbers balance out more. Long term saying take fuel away. Short term on bank two saying to add it. So they're going to balance out. Long term on bank one saying to add fuel. Short term saying to take it away. Real good review of those those fuel trims and how they're used. These O2s are actually switching now. I 
I really want to see this balance out a lot more. We'll let it run for another minute or so. Again, we need an oil change for sure on this vehicle. We don't know how long they've been running this vehicle like this. My guess is a long time, and, and we, we definitely have fuel contaminated oil. The other thing too is we don't know what else has been left off of this, if there's any minor vacuum leaks and things like that. So I'm not really focused on these fuel trim numbers and having them perfect right now for this video. I think the main purpose of this video we've shown, which is what reversed O2s look like. Now think about the three-cylinder misfire that they complained about. With all of the fuel being taken away from one of the banks, of course, that is going to set a three-cylinder, you know, symptom-wise, a three-cylinder misfire. If you happen to do a cylinder drop test during that event, you would find that those three cylinders are not contributing at all. You know, you might think spark, fuel, compression, reversed O2s. These numbers look better. Still a little bit rich on the long term in memory, but again, uh, we're not overly concerned about that. Let's take a look at these O2s now, see what they look like. There's my upstreams, there's my downstreams. And it looks like we got a little bit better cat on bank two than we do on bank one. But again, we're not really worried about that. Let's do a uh, key off and uh, make sure you turn the key right back on so we don't lose our data. And I'll let this roll for a second. And then what I'll let you guys look at is the initial startup period to see what that looks like just so you guys have a good before and after. Okay, go ahead and start that back up. Right now we're still in open loop. We can watch our O2. As soon as our O2 starts to move, that's another clue for when you're in closed loop. As soon as the O2 starts switching rich and, and lean, in fact, they are right now. And I could scroll to tell you, there you go, closed loop for sure. Reversed upstream O2 connectors, causing a three-cylinder misfire. Symptoms on this vehicle, it ran good cold, it ran good when you, when you uh, masked it to the floor. When it ran bad was during cruising periods and that all matches an O2 problem. O2 problems, the O2 is not used when it's cold, the O2 is not used at wide open throttle, every other steady throttle position, this vehicle fall on its face. In fact, they had it towed here, that's how bad it ran. Amazing what an O2 can do as far as drivability, especially if the two upstreams are switched. So that's it. Again, this thing needs an oil change and you know, it may need some tweaking here with vacuum hoses and things like that. The engine was just put in, I think a real good visual inspection. And that really is in light of these fuel trim numbers. Let's get one final shot of these fuel trim numbers that I don't really like. Darn it. Long terms at 12% on bank two and 7% on bank one. Now, you know, that isn't really showing you fuel contaminated oil. If we had fuel contaminated oil, we'd see negative numbers here. So what that's suggesting to me is we may have a small vacuum leak somewhere. Maybe our air intake hose isn't tight, but not purpose of this video. Two reversed upstream O2 sensors.